Hello Year 8. Today we will be starting Lesson 13, which will be following a similar format to Lesson 12, but today we'll be looking at HICs. As from last lesson, you shall know what HICs are, and HICs are high income countries. So, as you can see on the map, we're going to be looking at the UK. Um, so, can you pause the video, write down the title, write down today's date, and resume the video when you're ready. Perfect, so let's carry on. So today we will be um, looking to understand how the UK is contributing to climate change, um, how we can identify ways in which we can reduce our contribution to climate change, and we will write a letter to a friend, only a short one, explaining how you would want to, the UK to combat climate change in the future and what we can do immediately. So that letter will be about one A4 side of paper, just kind of explaining what they can do today to help, what the UK has done recently, and what you want to happen in the future. So let's get into it. Right, I would suggest you need to write these down. So I will explain them to you first, and then I'll tell you when you need to be writing them down next. So emissions, you probably, I've probably said emissions to you before, you probably know what they are. If you don't, here we are. It's the production of something, normally gases or radiation. In this case, it's gases, greenhouse gases. You know what greenhouse gases are, it should be written in your books. Um, the next one is renewable energy. You should know what this is as well. We did this in lesson seven, I believe. Um, yeah, it's energy that when used, it doesn't run out. Solar or wind power, for example. Um, national grid. National grid is something that we're gonna see in one of the PDF files. It's the system of electricity and gas that runs throughout the UK. It distributes electricity and gas. You'll see this as power lines and pylons, and for gas, they're going to be in pipes under the ground. Um, also, that's kind of a part of infrastructure as well, so be aware of that. Um, GDP, we will see a little bit of that today, actually, in the next slide. GDP is the total goods and services within a country, like the value of the total goods and services divided up per person. And again, this is something we can um, measure development and how rich a country is really. So pause this video, write these down because you will be using them and I want you to be able to write these in your short letter. So pause the video, write these down and we'll carry on. Perfect. So. Here we go. So underneath the title, underneath the definitions you just wrote down, can you write down what we can infer from the graph? So what is the, what information is the graph telling us? So kind of describe what you see. So I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. So on the left is um, change relative to 2010. 2010 was a little bit of a high point for CO2. You can see the blue line, or the top line, is GDP. So that's wealth. That's kind of um, the wealth of the country gradually increasing up and up from 2010. And you can see the CO2 is in red. So on the bottom is the the years, and on the, the left axis, up axis, is the climate change relative to 2010 in percent. So pause the video and write down what you can see, what the correlation is, and what the trends are. So pause the video if you can. If you don't know what they are, or if you need help, don't don't worry, wait until after the video is paused and I'll explain it to you. Right, so 2010 was a high point. That's something to remember that was really high. Um, our um, CO2 emissions were, were extremely high. It was something that we needed to act on. Since 2010, you can see on the red line, between 2010 and 2011, um, there was quite a sharp uh, decrease in uh, carbon dioxide emissions or um, production. And between 2010 and 2019, as you can see at the top, up by here, the UK CO2 emissions has fallen by 29% over the last decade. That's fantastic news. That's really, really good. We will be looking into the reasons why in a minute, but in the blue line, you can also see um, the the wealth of the country has gone up. It's not necessarily the wealth of the individuals, but you could say as some sort of correlation, you could say as the country gets richer, 
um, the carbon dioxide production goes down. So that's something to remember. Um, it would be interesting if we could look at LICs and see if it's the other way with LICs. If they're getting a little bit poorer, if emissions are going up. I don't know. We should see. But if you have written down the answer and you're not quite happy with it, pause the video, go back over and describe it in a little bit more detail. Say about the correlation as the country gets a little bit richer and the CO2 decreases. And you can say between 2010 and 2019, so 9 to 10 years, there was a 29% decrease in CO2. So pause the video, go over that one more time, and then we'll carry on. Lovely job. So, on we go. There's four resources underneath this video. Like I was saying earlier, CO2 emissions in the UK, UK energy sources, uh, transport and electricity in the home. The top two, the CO2 and the UK energy sources, they're going to be kind of similar. There's going to be some bits of information that could be on either sheet, but you'll you'll have to look at that a little bit later when we will be continuing on some sentences. So make sure you can find them. If not, ask for help and we can get them sent to you by email. So on to the next one. Yes, so these four statements are matching up to four of those different sheets. I will not be telling you which ones are which, but if you've had a quick read over, which you should have by finding them, if you haven't already read over them, pause the video now, go back, read over each one of the sheets. There's quite interesting information, it's up to date and it's relevant to us. So read over them. And then I want you to copy these down into your books and I want you to finish off the sentences based on what you know from lesson seven up until now and using some of the information on those sheets. So as you can see at the top, let's help with one of them. So by turning off appliances in my kitchen, appliances are like kettles, cookers, um, microwaves, toasters, electric ovens, by turning off turning off appliances in my kitchen by the plug, I can reduce the demand for electricity. Then you'd have to describe why reducing the demand for electricity is beneficial, or why that is good, or why you know that would be good. So what you could be saying then is it is reducing the demand for electricity, which will reduce the demand on the national grid, which will prevent coal fires or coal power plants being used. Or you can say that, especially off peak time, that wasn't written down, but you might want to look into that as peak time. Um, you could say that reducing electricity, which means the average demand per year is going down. So per day over 365 days, if when you go to school, if you turn off the kettle at the plug, reducing demand, you're reducing your carbon footprint. So... There we are. So pause this video, write all of these down, give yourself a few lines underneath to be able to expand and write more, and then we'll move on. Brilliant. Let's move on. So what I want you to do now is to take roughly about one page in your book to be able to write a letter to a friend. I know what you're thinking, it seems like a lot of work. It isn't too bad, don't worry. I only want you to write about one, one sheet of paper. Number one, who are you writing to? You're going to be writing to a friend or a family member. The reason why you're going to be writing to them is because they don't know how to help and they're really worried about climate change. So this is where you are able to help. From lesson seven up until now, you've learned a lot. You've learned a lot about renewable energies, greenhouse gases, what we can do in our daily lives. And you have a lot in your books on what you can write down. So, why are we writing? Well, they're concerned, they want to see what they can do to help, and we want to know what we can benefit from, or how they can benefit from the, from the actions we're taking. Um, what you need to do is to explain as best you can what you would like the government to do in the future, or what you think they're already doing well with now, and what we as individuals can do right now. So we're going to be predicting the future a little bit and we can explain what we can do today as well. So this is the format you want to take. So 
I have a friend called Dan. If this was me, I would say, dear Dan, I'm writing to you today to explain some of the recent developments in nuclear energy, uh, renewable energy and emissions within the UK. I'd say between 2011 and 2019 or 2020, we have seen a drop of how much percent? Um, the area where we lost the most amount of CO2 was in the if you go back, you should be able to see where in either UK energy sources or CO2 emissions in the UK, which is underneath this video, um, for power plants. Another reason why we have reduced the amount of CO2 is because we can explain why. If we look in the appliances area for the, or the electricity in the home, we can explain why the demand for CO2 has gone down. When I'm describing to my friend Dan in this uh, letter, I need to talk to him in language in which he can understand. So, I can say, I think we have made some, I'd say, good progress within the UK, and I would like to see us, um, personally, I would like to see us put up more wind farms. I think wind farms are really beautiful, I think they're, they're really beneficial, and I would say in Wales, we have plenty of, of wind to be able to allow us to get sustainable energy consistently. And I think that would be beneficial. And then I would say to my friend Dan, I'd say, as individuals, we can turn off our Xboxes, we can turn off our TVs, we can turn off our lights before we go to bed, we can make sure all of the appliances we're not using can be turned off. There's lots of other things we can be doing as well. If you look back at lesson 12, there was a lot about eating. There was a lot about family size. There was a lot about transport. There was a lot about every aspect of life in which you can expand this bottom section as much as possible. So, this top half is the introduction. Hi, I'm writing to you to explain some recent developments in renewable energy. That's what you can say about wind farms. That's what you can say about solar energy. A lot of these different things that are short and sharp between 2011 and 2019 or 2020. That's going to be factual. And then you're going to explain why you think the CO2 has dropped. And then I think we have made some good or bad. So this is your opinion on whether or not you think we've done enough so far or if we're going in the right direction or if you think we haven't done enough and we need to change faster which is completely fine, but you need to explain why. And then at the end, thank you for your time, sincerely, and then you write your name. I don't want this to be much bigger than one page. Ideally, keep it in one page. And then, if you do manage to finish this, I have an interesting extension for you. So, pause this video, use this as a template, look back at those four PDFs from this lesson, the four PDFs from the previous lesson, lesson 12, and look back in your books. You've got plenty to write in here for personalised information for your friend. So I'd expect all of these to be different. So pause this video and carry on writing this. And when you finished, we'll move on. Right, so now that you have finished this, and it shouldn't be any bigger than a page, we will see if you are able to do this. This is a prediction. This is what you think will be happening in the future based on this graph. So, after your letter, I want you to look back at this graph and I want you to be able to write what you think will happen in the next 10 years. So, as we can see, 20, 2010 to 2019, CO2 has gone down and GDP has gone up. Ignore GDP unless you want to write a little bit more. I'd focus mainly on CO2. So do you think CO2 emissions will stop declining? So declining is in, in the red. You can see it's going down, 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 which is excellent news. Or do you think the CO2 emissions will go up? And why? So this is based on what you think. This is going to be your personal information based on what you think and what you believe. There's no right or wrong answer. Write down a few sentences on this when you're ready. So pause the video and then write down. Right, now that you've finished, this is going to be for everybody who has finished this lesson completely. 
and then this is the extension. So, in the in this in the extension, you will need to do some personalized research or um, individual research. You will need the internet. So, if you have finished, do this for me. Use the internet. Go on and see if you can find what has happened to the CO two or carbon dioxide emissions. Um, whether or not they've increased or decreased in 2020. Explain why you think they've changed. There's lots of different reasons, and a lot of them are already written down in the PDFs. Although it doesn't re rate, uh, relate specifically to 2020, there's a big hint on your screen. So, think of what's happened in 2020, and try and find out if global CO2 has increased, or if it's decreased, and then... Try and explain why you think it's either increased or decreased. So, once you have done that, you have finished for today. So next lesson we will be looking at Swansea and some of the green, greener energy or renewable energy generating ideas. So, fantastic work today and I will see you for next lesson. Thank you, Year 8.